Thank you for joining our broadcast today at City Life Church. We would love to hear how God is using this ministry in your life. Please take a minute to send us your story at info at citylifechurch.cc. And if God has used this ministry to touch you in any way, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially to help us bring God's word to other people. You can go to our website at citylifechurch.cc to find the giving options that works best for you. Now in today's message, Pastor Tony will be delivering an encouraging word that we know is going to touch your life. We pray that you listen with expectation, believing that everything you need from God, he's going to do it. Enjoy today's message. City Life so great to worship with you today. I pray you had an amazing week. I pray that God did some incredible things in your life. You know, things are a little different right now. The church buildings aren't open. The campuses are on lockdown. But the good news is the church is open. The church is still advancing. And I want to thank you. You have made ministry happen all week long because of your giving and your faithfulness and your serving. The church is on the move. Lives are being changed. Thank you for being faithful. You know, I know in our world, things are a little different. My girls are out of school and we've been working from home and our services are coming back to you by the way of media. And it, things are just different right now. We even added a dog to our family. Now, it wasn't an easy decision. The girls had a lot of convincing to do. And finally, me and Pastor Casey gave in. And they're going to put a picture on the screen to the new steward edition. There's now four girls in our house. So I am totally outnumbered. And we welcome Macy to our house. She's a, a, a eight pound golden doodle that we welcomed in. And we're doing all the puppy stuff. She's up in the night, chewing on everything, uh, trying to get her out of the house when it's time to go. So our quarantine has got a little stretch this week. And I know maybe yours has too. So wherever you're at, I'm praying that in this season, God's doing something amazing in your life. I want to talk to you for just a few moments about the good shepherd. The good shepherd. You know, the word of God says in John chapter 10, verse 11, this is Jesus talking. This is red letter stuff. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd laid down his life for his sheep. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And then in verse 14, he said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. You know, I've been thinking about the season we're in. And for many, the season has been just a crisis. And in a few moments, it felt like the breaks of life went on and things changed. Watching the news reports and we're hearing the reports of the economy and all of the things. And, you know, we find that one outlet says one thing and then another news outlet says something different. One doctor says this and another doctor says this. And it feels like there is crisis everywhere. People are losing their job. Unemployment rates are at an all-time high. And it feels like there is just a moment of crisis. And, you know, you can be a crisis Christian. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a crisis Christian. A crisis Christian are those that run to Christ or the church during crisis. But that's really not God's plan and purpose for your life. I don't want to be just a crisis Christian. Now, if you've done that, and we're just glad you found the good news of the gospel, I'm just glad that you're allowing God to work in your life. But the thing is that you've got to make sure when the crisis is over that you still allow the relationship you have to mature. And to flourish. I want to be a Christian that navigates through crisis well. One that embraces the moment knowing that in all things God is working. Knowing that God is working even in these unseen times. There's a God that is unmovable. And I'm praying for you and I'm praying that for my family. That we navigate through this crisis because we have a knowledge of the word of God. We have the presence of God that is always with us. The good shepherd is in our life. Well, in all through the word of God, we find that the Father and then Jesus in the New Testament is referred to as the good shepherd, the shepherd leading sheep. Now, now it's, it's a little, um, uh, it makes me wonder why God cho chose a sheep to identify us. You know, sheep aren't the smartest animals. 
They're not easily led. They don't have a lot of giftings. They produce wool and, and uh, you know, they eat grass and they're stubborn at times. They're not very teachable. Why would God use a sheep as the analogy for his people? We find that, that there's no guide sheep. They, they don't lead the pack. There's no pack sheep. They don't carry packs of things like a, a donkey would or even a goat would. You don't find them carrying things or, you know, packing things. There's no guard sheep. You wouldn't get a sheep to guard your house. You wouldn't have a guard sheep like a guard dog. Why would he use sheep? They're not trainable. They're, they're hard to teach. They're hard to, to lead. I, I find that because that's a lot like our human nature. And we find all through the Word of God that the Father refers to who He is and then in the Son as a shepherd, the good shepherd. You know, God began to use the life of a young man in the Old Testament. A young man that was a shepherd. He was given the assignment of tending to his father's sheep. His name was David. And in a moment we find that God thrust him into a season of destiny and promise. And in a moment we find standing in his father's living room, a prophet told him that he would be the next king of Israel. And they took a horn of oil and released it over David's life. And the Bible said he had the anointing of a king. In one moment he's a shepherd, and now we find himself positioned to be a king. And David would write so many beautiful songs and psalms. We would find that David was trained in the field and he would understand the principles of guarding, teaching, leading, and training sheep. And we find that David would have alone moments and isolated moments and moments of great revelation. But in Psalm 23, David gives us a beautiful picture of how a shepherd leads and how a sheep follows. And David said this in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. David began to write, and every line, so important, every line, such revelation that I believe David learned while watching and guarding and leading sheep in a field, remaining faithful in times of crisis, when one moment a bear would come and another time a lion would come and David would have to guard, he would have to lead, he would have to chase them down when they would wander off. And even moments have to put some of them down because of those sheep finding themselves in, in, in fallen places, in broken places. And David would learn so many kingdom principles in a field as a shepherd. Cold nights, long winters, hot sun, beating down in hot days. And David would learn these principles. And in Psalm 23, line by line, every word, such revelation. He starts out this way, the Lord is my shepherd. Now watch, David understands what it is to be a shepherd. And this is what he says, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. He makes it personal. Just as Jesus taught us to pray, when he said, when you pray, pray like this, our Father in heaven Holy is your name. Jesus said, you're in this personal relationship. And David said, if I'm going to walk 
and be led. The Bible says those that are the sons and daughters of God, they are led by the Spirit of God. David knew if he was truly going to be led, he had to be led by the great shepherd. You see, many of us want a shepherd, but we do not want to be sheep. We do not want to follow and train. We don't want to learn and be what God has called us to. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. My shepherd, it's personal. I'm in a personal relationship. Now, if you're going to be a Christian that navigates through crisis well, you've got to have a personal relationship with Christ. You've got to follow the good shepherd. He said, I am the good shepherd. Matter of fact, I'm going to lay down my life for the sheep. My sheep will know my voice, he said, and another they will not follow. He said, they will know me, I will know them, and they will follow me. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. See, now watch. David understands what it is to follow through many different seasons. Through the seasons of a shepherd. Through the seasons of battle. Through the seasons of loss. Through the seasons of triumph where they were proclaiming David, the great king of Israel. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Then he says this, I lack nothing. I lack nothing. Why did he say that? It, because he never had a need? Because it was never a crisis? Because it was never anything in his life that uh, was needing? No. What he was saying was this, the shepherd that I follow has all that I need. The shepherd that I follow has everything. He's all sufficient. Matter of fact, he said he would supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. His supply is endless. Everything I need is found in him. Everything that I, I, I desire according to his will, I find in him. I lack nothing. This shepherd that I follow, he is never, he is never lacking. So therefore, I lack nothing. He is all sufficient. He is always there. He said, I lack nothing. And then he says this, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. You know, I found one of the things that's happening in my life, in our family, we're kind of finding a Sabbath again. You know, we're, we're at home, we're eating together, we're having some moments uh, that we don't normally always have. And maybe in this season, the Good Shepherd has you in green pastures. Maybe he's reminding you that you need a Sabbath. Maybe he's reminding you that you need those moments to rest. Those moments of refreshment. Those moments where he just speaks to your spirit. He said he makes me lie down in green pastures. The reason a shepherd would make and allow a sheep to lie down in pastures would be for rest. So they would have strength for the journey. And that's what the Holy Spirit does as he leads us. As the good shepherd is leading us, there are moments where he says, it's time to rest. It's time to breathe. It's time to allow me to refresh you. He said, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Then he said this, he leads me beside quiet waters. It refers to a place of peace. A place of contentment. He said, as the good shepherd leads me, he leads me in places where peace. Jesus told his disciples just before he left, in a challenging moment where they're getting ready to face some of their greatest battles, he said, I'm leaving my peace with you. He said, it's not the same type of peace that the world gives you because they give it and they take it. It's not a tranquil feeling. It's not just a, just a, a sense of happiness. But he said, my peace is going to be instilled in you. The world will not be able to rob it. In your greatest battles, it will be present. Matter of fact, it will go beyond your understanding, your intellect, what you know. I'm going to just instill it. And this is what it said. He leads me beside quiet water. There is a peace when he is leading me and I am following him. He said, I want you to understand a place of contentment in me when even though things aren't going the way you thought and even when life hits you and you did not see it coming, there is a contentment because you know there is a peace that you have in Christ. He said, the good shepherd will lead you and he will refresh you and everything you need is found in him and he will allow the peace of the kingdom to rise up and 
guard you and cover you and he will allow you to understand that there is a place of contentment in him. And then I love what he says in the next line. He said, he restores my soul. I am telling you, there is something about walking in a season where he leads you in green pastures and he allows you to be content that he begins to restore you. He begins to heal you. He begins to bring wholeness in your life because it's in those moments of refreshing that we allow him to work in our life. He said he restores my soul. And I'm believing in this season that you did not see coming. God's restoring something. It's not going to be a season of loss. It's going to be a season of restoration. It's going to be a season where what the enemy thought he was going to dismantle in your life, God's going to put back together and build it up. He said, he restores my soul. And I love what the next line says. He leads me in the right path of righteousness for his name's sight. He said, he's guiding me in purpose. David knew what this was all about. He knew what it was to stumble in from a field and encounter a prophet that had a word for his life that said the next season of your life will be the best season of your life. The next season that you're getting ready to encounter is going to lead you to the greater. Get ready, David. You'll not always be in a field, but one day you'll sit on a throne and you'll lead armies and you'll see victories and you'll walk in a place of provision like never before. And David knew what it was. He said, he leads me in right paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He is leading me, not by my name, but his great name. He's leading me in places where he takes that purpose that he has deposited in me. And as he leads me, he brings it out. I'm believing for someone right now in a season that you did not expect, in a season that you did not see coming, God is revealing his purpose in you. I told you last week that isolation many times is where God does his greatest work and brings his greatest revelation revelation and for some of you he's leading you in a path you you thought that that job you lost was disaster God said no no I'm setting you up for a better job matter of fact I've heard testimonies already how people have lost jobs but already in this season they've got a better job he's leading me in the right path at the right time he's putting me in the right place he's connecting me to the right people he's allowing me to walk out the kingdom purpose and plan that's right for my life. For his name's sake. And then it says this. Even though I walk through the darkest valley. You may know it like this. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm in a season that would seem to take me out. I'm in a season that most of the times in my journey I would have given up. Because this season seems greater than me. This season seems beyond me. This season seems more than I can bear. But all of a sudden David rises up because he knows that he is following the good shepherd. And he knows that he lacks nothing. Everything he needs is found in the shepherd. And David knows that there's been seasons of rest and seasons of restoration. And then David rises up and said, even though I'm walking through a valley and it would seem like it is going to destroy me and kill me I will fear no evil why for you are with me and I want you to know right now you don't have to be afraid you don't have to let fear grip your heart because the good shepherd has a plan the good shepherd is leading you the good shepherd is walking with you and he has everything you lead you lack nothing everything you need is found in him David said in the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil For you are with me. For you are with me. You're right here. You know, to have a valley, you need two mountains or two high places. To have a valley, you need two points that are higher than the low place. And what's amazing is this. Psalm 23 talks about this valley. But what you have to understand when you read, you read in context. Psalm 22 is a prophetic psalm. And it is a prophetic word about Mount Calvary. A mountain where Jesus would pay a price for destiny and eternity. And Psalm 24 is about Mount Zion. 
the kingdom of God in force and the eternal work of that kingdom. So what you have in chapter 22 is Calvary and the prophecy of Jesus. In 24, what you have is the destiny and the Mount Zion of our future where the kingdom authority is going to be released. And in the middle, you find that you have a valley. But when you know there's a cross in your past and there, there is a kingdom in your future, you can say, in the valley, I will fear no evil because you are in this valley. You are right here with me. David would go on to say, your rod and your staff brings me cover. We're going to talk about this next week. He would go on to say, the goodness of God and the mercy of God, they are with me all the day of my life. You've anointed my head with oil. My cup is overflowing. I'm telling you if you ever have the revelation that God has anointed your mind to get through this season, it changes everything. David said you anoint me goodness and mercy are with me and then he rises up with a prophetic declaration and we're going to talk about these next week. He said I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and forever. Amen. For some of you, you need to get a word in your spirit and you need to get up in this season and declare I lack nothing. I am following the good shepherd. Matter of fact in this season he's restoring me. He's giving me rest. He's instilled a peace and a confidence and a contentment like I've never had. He's allowed me to understand that in this season he's working for my good. In this season He's declaring who I am. Oh, I'm just in a season right now and this is not the end. I will fear no evil because you are leading me and you are guiding me and you are with me and you are working and you are fighting. And I know because there's a cross in my path there's a kingdom authority in my future. And when you understand that, you can say like David, even in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because I'm following the good shepherd. Because him I lack nothing. Goodness and mercy are with me. Blessing and favor are mine to have. prophetic word begins to rise up. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 says this. And then I'm believing this for someone. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captive and release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. And provide those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. The oil of joy instead of mourning. And a garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness and despair. They will be called the oaks of righteousness. A planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. I'm believing this. That God's about to give someone beauty for ashes. He's about to give you a song in the midnight. He's going to slip over you a garment of praise. And you're going to be planted as an oak. And the righteous purpose and plan of God is getting ready to come forth. Because this season did not catch God off guard. I lack nothing. Why? Because in this valley, the good shepherd is leading me. I know his voice. I hear his voice. I know his nature. I know his grace. I know his mercy. So I will fear no evil because you are with me. 
I want you to know right now, he's with you. The good shepherd is leading you. Overwhelming seasons allow us to encounter them with the word of God, the knowledge of God, our relationship with Christ. Allows us to know that we are covered and we are protected. Psalm 91 says this, verse 11, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. You may not know this and you may not be able to see them, but there's angels on guard. And that is he's leading you from mountain to valley to the next mountain. He's got you covered. So you lack nothing. You don't have to fear. God just could be using this season to take you into a season of rest, into a place of peace, into a moment of promise. Thank you again for joining us for today's broadcast. Our prayers that it ministered to you and it changed your life. If there's anything we can pray with you about or God has used this ministry to touch you in any way, please send us an email at info at citylifechurch.cc. We also want to invite you to be our guest at one of our Sunday or Wednesday worship experiences. You can find our times and locations on our website at citylifechurch.cc. You can also download the City Life app on your smartphones or tablets for more online messages. It was great worshiping with you today, and we'll see you next time.